there's one over here. And there's one over there. It's not everywhere. Never carry no. <laughs> That's right. Yes. But the chair that I love, that one particular chair, is not there. Okay. Um, the, 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 first of all, the book reviews are due, uh, thanks, George, uh, are due uh, now. Uh, I will not look at them at all until this Thursday. So you have at least till this Thursday for those of you that are having nervous breakdowns about it. Um, I thought it was Thursday. It was so Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. Cool. Oh, was it? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so right, have till Monday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, if you lived away away, would you be able to email them? Like yeah, of course. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Tell them. Um, notice my new poster, Safe Use of Knives. <laughs> I just love that. Okay. Um, so I just think that we should bear that in mind, you know, while we're doing philosophy. It's very important. Okay. Um, the analytic essay is due on the 9th of January. On that day is a Thursday. Uh, Sally, where is she? She's not here yet. Uh, asked me to... Uh, is it Sally or Sarah? Sarah. 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 Yes. You asked me to get the video. Oh, okay, not Sally. Um, yeah, um, to get the questions in, so I did that. So I'm a good person. So you can, I know that Christmas is coming, and nothing is more fun than writing an essay. Um, now, on the essay, there are five questions. There are five questions on this essay. There's a chair there and a chair here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, please. Just keep handing them out to the. Yeah, that was just like that. <laughs> that was well done. It's right. Yeah, it's no, nice. one can, no one can reach it. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, okay, so there are there will be five questions as you will see. Um, they are if you're doing this as a core course, which is about three of you or four of you, then it's a five to six thousand um, word essay. If you're doing it as a as an option, then it's less. It's three thousand words. Now, uh, if you want to do a practice-based piece with it, you can, but you need to tell me. Um, <clears throat> you'll see that there's no there's no uh, curveballs, I don't think, but they're not easy. And I know they're not easy. So I am very prepared to meet with you guys, if I'm not in a meeting, that is, uh, you know, uh, to discuss this. Uh, ref lockdown is the 28th of November, and then I'm free. Okay, so then I, I, I will not have the same level of insanity that I have at the moment. That's the first thing I want to mention. The second thing I want to mention is, um, before we get going, really get going, uh, is that on the 28th of uh, this month, there's the book launch for uh, Article Press, which is going to be uh, the two journals of the thesis. Uh, it's going to be, uh, and on the verge uh, of photography, and it'll also be Clear Textual Realities by Rogers. Um, so be there if you can. It's at 4 to 7, right? And there'll be drinks, courtesy of uh, somebody, Ed. Uh, and there'll be food, probably not edible. Um, but anyway, it'll be in the, um, in the main. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so that's that. Okay, the, uh, the 28th, which is a Thursday, 4 to 7. Uh, the next thing to say is that we won a, uh, an AHRC bid, a block partnership bid, um, which means that uh, they are taking applications for funding, full funding, um, for PhD study. Obviously, if you're full time, this is, this is for you. And if you're not, then it's not. And if you're already started, you can still apply. Uh, that goes for you as well if you want. Uh, but anyway, so it's conceivable, not you know inconceivable. And um, the deadline is sadly the 9th of January. So we just found out like two days ago. We weren't allowed to announce it, which was like also kind of interesting. Uh, so it's you, we've got quite a few um, of the. Oops, sorry. Of the um, of the awards, but we're in a consortium of five universities, so um, it's a an AHRC. It's it's serious money. I mean, it's um, I, I think I think it's fifteen thousand uh, pounds plus your tuition plus it covers all your art expenses or something like that. I forget how it works, but it's 
it's a good award if you can get it. Um, so go for it because why could why shouldn't you get it? And the only problem is that uh, because it's consortium, you will be interviewed by about 25 different people, none of whom are associated, or very few of whom will be associated with this university. I mean, I might be on the panel, but it will be very, it's, your application will go through many layers and levels and so on. So don't, um, anybody need this still? Um, yes. That, those are the essay questions. <laughs> okay. Any questions so far about that? So do you have to have an idea of what you're doing? Basically? Yeah, that's you do, and not just an idea. Um, it is on the website, is it? Okay, great. And it's on the which part of the website is it on? I just googled uh, BCU PhD uh, studentships, I think, something like that. Great. And that came up, but it's on a website called sort of like, like uh, Midlands. Three Midlands cities. three cities, yeah. yeah. Midlands Three Cities. I don't know why, because it, yeah, something like something really weird. But if you just go to the BCU site, it'll come up. Or if you just Google. How many are there? Uh, we got about. Um, four hundred and ten. Yeah, we got four hundred and ten. Staggered over. But there. <laughs> Anybody else need anything? Oh yeah. We're all good to go. Uh, do you need any more for this? Uh, okay. Yeah. Well done. Okay. Any questions? It's heavy competition, and uh, anyone who wants to apply, I need to talk to you. I need to basically help you write your application. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was on. Uh, anyway, because um, it's it's. it's <laughs> Because <laughs> it's very complex and it's it's highly uh, nuanced, let's say. Um, and uh, the person who got the HRC uh, this year um, or last year it was uh, was um, uh, Mattia Paganelli, and this year uh, PhD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This year they did Rebecca. Rebecca Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So they did have one. Yeah, yeah, they had one. That's right, of course. She, and she got the horology. She's horology. Yeah. Um, and basically, um, that's right, of course. Um, it has to be written in a way that shows that you pretty much are farther along than you ought to be for this moment in life. Okay, so that's why I need to talk to you. So don't, don't be appalled. The other thing is that if you're interested in doing a PhD and this doesn't seem like the thing for you, we do now have uh, bursaries for teaching. Uh, so it means a PhD, uh, your tuition will be paid for, but the, in exchange, you're enslaved to become a tu tutor. Okay, so that's the that's the little game that's going on there. Um, I don't think there's a chair. Is, is that a black stool? Yeah, there's a black stool. You can sit on the table. It's fine. There's a, little um, comfy one there's a little comfy one there, but you'll be a little thin. You are thin. That's right. Here. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions so far about that? That's kind of important. Okay. Okay. See me. Go to the website. Have a small but not insignificant nervous breakdown when you see the the. Is the application on there? Um. Yeah, take a look at the application. It looks really deceptively simple. And it'll say things like, uh, you need you know, 4,000 characters to explain your, um, your work. And they don't mean like actors. <laughs> they mean literally like spaces and this and that. Uh, and they can't be 4,001. It can only be up to 4,000. That, that kind of thing goes on. It's very tight. Um, OK, but someone's got to get it. You know, um, so that's this is all there is to it. Um, shall we go to the questions? Since I'm on a, a ser serious time uh, issue here. Um, what I didn't uh, put on this is that it has to be Chicago reference style. I'm sorry, I forgot to put that on there. So Chicago reference. And Wendy was saying that she found a YouTube um, sort of uh, discussion of it and uh, of how to do Chicago, and it was good, right? It just 
show to the computer panel, you just pause it and you just press that button and do your margins right. So I have some my computer and I'd stop and I'd do that and let it go, this is how you do the text. I mean, I told you I've interpreted the way I did, whether I got it completely right, but it did just tap you through exactly okay. the center and show, you know, all the little words at the top, you don't know what they mean. Yeah. If I press that and then headers will come up and it automatically numbered it for me. Yeah. I couldn't have done that. I'm, I'd already done it wrong, so when I got that, I was able to correct it. Um, okay, <laughs> well, I think we're going to have to end up moving to another room at some point soon. Um, there is the table. There's a seat in the middle because I think kind of, I'm not going to write the question up. Okay, goodbye. Because so, it's, um, yeah, it's <laughs> like, oh, they can have space. That's very kind of you. It's fine. So there's the space, there's the phone. <laughs> feeling as well. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. Okay, did you get a, a copy of this? No. Just came out. Okay, so uh, what you missed was there's a, um, the, whoever came in late, there's an AHRC award for, for PhD that's happening for next year, uh, but the applications are due in on the 9th of January. And if you go to the BCU uh, website and type in, or you go to Google and type in BCU Studentships AHRC, it'll take you to that page, which is, um, a page that is basically at the AHRC, A, Art, Humanities, H, Research Council, AHRC, the AHRC. Right, here are the five questions. Now, these questions, first of all, Chicago school, so Chicago referencing style. These questions are difficult, but they're not impossible, I don't think. Um, and they're meant for you to really get your, you know, uh, teeth into this, uh, into this class. What I'm hoping that you get from contemporary philosophy and aesthetics is the way in which a certain kind of methodology, that being dialectics, basically underwrites more or less the whole field of philosophy and art up until the 21st century, or let's say up until the middle of the 20th century, somewhere in there. Once quantum physics lands, it's a different story, but up until then, it, it kind of comes into the picture, and that's why I insist that you know it, so you can spot it, <laughs> so you can feel it, it, it shows up. Okay, so that, that's the... Um, Uh, if you want to do an art piece, like I was saying, with this, that still doesn't mean that you can shorten your discussion. It just means you're also doing more. Good questions. Anybody need oh, questions? Everybody has questions? Speak now. I okay. have a lot of questions. <laughs> just put that there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, notice that the deadline is the 9th of January, 2014. Then it says it again. Okay. So, if you are taking this as an option, it's 3,000 words, and if you're taking it as a core, it's 5,000 words, basically. Um, and for those of you that are sitting in, you're more than welcome to give it a go. You don't have to, and I know that you're suffering in your own PhD madness, but don't hold back if you want to do this. Okay. 
Question one. In Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit, an argument about subjectivity as something distinct from but linked to objectivity is addressed by a dialectics, dialectical synthesis. Please discuss his development of these two concepts, first explicating the role of nothing. Now notice that nothing is that odd kind of object. Nothing, no thing, is in relationship to the thing, which is another odd object, by relying on, in particular, the preface in the phenomenology and the introduction. In what way or ways is this linked to A, negation, B, conscience, C, the ethical, D, art? Here's the curve. How would Kierkegaard's teleological suspension of the ethical have bearing or not on this dialectically teleological approach to subjectivity? And I don't faint. Okay, um, <coughs> that's just 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 hear it with the fall bonus. Now, when it says bonus, it doesn't mean you have to put this in. If you do put it in, the chances of you getting the 90s is much more um, real because it just makes it more difficult but it might orient you in a way. So bonus question, uh, how would the contemporary move towards speculative realism? <laughs> Mark. And object-oriented ontology connect or not with the Hegelian approach? How would that connect or not with the Hegelian approach? You do not need to answer that question. That is a bonus question. <laughs> Google it. Harman, Greg, uh, Graham Harman, H-A-R-M-A-N, uh, Melissou, M-E-I-L-L-O-U, yeah, S-S-O-U-X, uh, and a whole bunch, Ray, there's a whole bunch of people that are writing on this. Okay, there's also a thing called object-oriented feminism, oof, and object-oriented philo uh, philosophy, oops. Okay, so, you know, honestly, if you're going to start a movement, take account of the acronym, okay? <laughs> Just, okay? Question two. The term degenerate art was consistently used by the Nazis to describe virtually all modern, modernist art. In a textual encounter with Benjamin, Lukash and Brecht, Adorno takes the position that, quote, art need not defend itself against the rebuke that it is degenerate. Art meets such rebuke by refusing to affirm the miserable course of the world as the iron law of nature, unquote. That's from blah, blah, blah. Okay, discuss. Drawing on three avenues of inquiry. One, the role of reason and doubt in Descartes Arendt's restaging of the conditions of what it means to be human, or what it is to be human. Two, the role of the dirty, sensuous, and transgressive or disruptive or disruption of limits. And three, whether or not this move initiated in points one and two, that is to say the role of doubt and reason and the role of being dirty, creates a political value of art. Bonus, you are welcome to develop your argument in relation to the practice of a number of artists, including yourself, if you so wish. Three, on the question of writing poetry and uh, Auschwitz, Adorno writes, quote, but since in a world whose law is universal individual profit, the individual has nothing but this self that has become indifferent, the performance of the old, familiar tendency is at the same time the most dreadful of things. There is no getting out of this, no more than out of the electrified barbed wire around the camps. Perennial suffering has as much right to expression as a tortured man has to scream. Hence, it may, may have been wrong to say that after Auschwitz, you could no longer write poems. And that's from his um, Negative Dialectics. So that's a little quote, a little upbeat quote to use during Christmas when you're writing this, okay. Uh, what does it mean politically, philosophy, and aesthetically to suggest not only can one, quote, write poetry after Auschwitz, but also that one must write poetry after Auschwitz. So it even means discussing your own Auschwitz, as it were. Discuss in relationship to uh, continuity, discontinuity, the role of suffering and guilt, challenging the status quo, the meaning of both poetry stroke poetics to the expression and making of art. Bonus, which was meant to be in red. 
connect the argument to the film, The Imposter. Has anybody seen that film? It's fabulous. It's brilliant. A friend of mine made that film. And um, she also made, um, she's also made, um, what's that one, the guy who became the singer who got very well known. Anyway, the one, he won the Academy Award, they won the Academy for that other film. And I kept saying, no, put the imposter in. That is, the imposter is brilliant. It's just it's mind blowing. So brilliant. It's brilliant on so many levels. Yeah. You come out thinking, why is that? And they used the real goal, which is really Yeah, which is really, really quite incredible, really too. So I put a little trailer so you could watch <coughs> it and then go out and get it. Question four. What does it mean, methodologically, to suggest the sum is always greater than the whole of its parts? Discuss in relation to the different ways Hegel, as distinct from Adorno, develops the, ar develops the argument, sorry, I spelled that wrong, develop, develops the argument, paying attention to the notion of excess and disintegration in Adorno's negative dialectics. Hint, bring in the argument of, dial bring, bring in, bring into the argument. Uh, dialectical universality, telos, sublation, imminence, becoming, and negation. Bonus. Discuss in relation to atonal music of either John Cage or Eric Satie, or in fact any other atonal music you might want to get into. I just put those down as markers. Last question. What does it mean to have faith with respect to the work of art? In what way or ways does this involve the sexual, erotic, and libidinal? Bonus. Also supposed to be in red. Please link your arguments to The Wicker Man or The Night Porter. The Wicker Man is the 1973 version, not <laughs> the Nicholas Cage version, <laughs> which you would miss the whole point of the latter one. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Questions? Are you excited? Yeah. Um, anybody going to do number one, just off the top of your head? Do you think? Good. Good. That's that's probably the toughest one. <laughs> uh, anybody going to do number two? Degenerates. I might do two or three. Yeah, I thought I might do two. Yeah. If I were doing it, I'd probably do two. Um, also, actually, it's conceivable that you could also bring in the imposter for two as well. Yeah, I was going to say it would fit with that. Yeah. Okay. In that uh, case, I'll do two. Okay, <laughs> so you're not doing one. No, I was never doing one. Oh, I see, sorry. I'm going to do two or three. Okay, three. What about three? Now, that's a kind of interesting one. That, you know, for those of you that, you know, really want to get into the question of suffering and the political and what it means to talk about, you know, you don't have to go to Auschwitz. You can go to the Philippines right now. Or you can go to any of the terrible things that have been going on in the world, including in this world right here in this city. So. Auschwitz is a marker. If something horrible happens to you or your family or your community, how do you pick yourself up? That's what's being asked here. And it's not being asked in a, in a psychological way, it's being asked analytically. It's the big key here. Um, and he gets into this whole question of how do you, it's like doing sit-ups or something. It's like doing, um, although I, I <laughs> Did anybody ever do wool sits? Do you know what wool sit is? Are you a yoga person? Anybody do wool sit? Yeah. A wall sit. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Can you demonstrate a wall sit against the <laughs> safe? In this oh. Sorry about that, mm -hmm. yes. So see the safe use of knives poster? It's my new poster. You mean my legs are the wall? No. No. Squat no, down. Squat down. Squat. Put your so like back against the wall. Chair. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Okay, and put your hands out like this, like a, like a, like relax on your lap, and you stay there for at least a minute. Now, the thing is, is that it's a tough thing to do, but it trains you to relax bizarrely. Okay? My business uses torture as well. <laughs> no, seriously, it is. Anyway. <laughs> torture, <laughs> relax. Uh, yeah, well, we could actually discuss that in relationship to relaxation, but anyway, uh, or the sexual or whatever. Anyway, what, what we're doing here, though, is trying to get what you're being asked analytically to do is to figure out what kind of athletics you need to do to get yourself away from common sense of how to deal with this and literally 
not ra not so much that you're rationally figuring out how to write poetry, because poetry is not rational in that sense, but how you move on in a certain sense, or how you bring the suffering with you without being drowned by it. Okay, so it's a tough question. That, that's also probably one of the tougher ones. Um, well done. <laughs> Uh, are you going to get to the bottom where you just go, actually, these are all, these are tough questions, they're all tough questions. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I say that at the bottom. <laughs> Number four. Um, anybody going to do the sum is always greater than the whole of its parts? Awesome. Good. I love the bonus question. <coughs> yeah, I knew that would like. <coughs> that one's a tough one. Uh, well, it's, it's not as tough as number one, I don't think, although it's differently tough. Uh, this one. I think that if I were you, I would figure out, uh, you know, there's a section in Adorno, I think on pages four and five, or five and six, somewhere in there, uh, which is um, how an object, it says, this, the, this, the, um, the, what do you call it, the, the quote, as it were, is that an object never goes into its subject without leaving a remainder. And that key, that notion of excess, that, that some, you can never have a literal translation of something. That's Benjamin. Who's working on Benjamin? Is there, you know? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, there's Millie. <laughs> Sinking into the couch. Uh, you can never have something a literally that literally uh, goes from point A to B that translates in that sort of literal sense, okay? Um, um, and what you'll find is if you allow yourself to discuss this in relationship to atonal music, by which is meant music that both makes sense and doesn't make sense at the same time, it has a certain kind of beat, a certain kind of rhythm, a certain kind of non-rhythm, a certain kind of something else that's going on. You know, something like that. I'm not sure it sounds better than that, but that's one <laughs> version of it. Um, and John Cage, you know, his, uh, his uh, four minute, 33 second uh, sonata, or whatever it is, that's also great. Yeah, silence. What does he do in that? Do you silence. Know? silence. No, it's, no, it's not silence. <laughs> no, 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 no. Perfect, no. No, it's no, not silence. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Don't stop me. The safe, the safe use of knives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's called, they, they say it's silence, but I know it's not silence. It's, it's, a huge, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a huge debate about that, if it is or if it isn't. Mm, I say it's not. <laughs> well done. Okay. Yeah, First, it's like huge. Beckett's silence, so it's, it's exactly the same. I mean, it's the whole idea. performance around it, like the piece when you turn up and Can you ever have silence? Mm -hmm. That's very difficult. I say no. Okay, not if you're thinking dialectically. No, I don't know if I <laughs> but if you're thinking some other way, like in singularity, you can never have silence if you've got the phones. <laughs> what? Singularity. We haven't gotten to that concept yet. Awkward silence. The song of silence. Now, what was the, the the something of silence? Paul. What sound. Was sound. Sound. The sound of silence. That's it. That's quite sad, really, isn't it? Okay. Um, question five. The question of faith. Now, obviously, this is talking about Kierkegaard, um, and um, and. I was so uh, not impressed with the way I gave my lecture on Bataille, and I have to say that normally I don't say that to you guys, but um, I thought that, um, you know, not that this is an excuse, but it's the only one I've got, uh, that particular way of trying to discuss it with you was complicated because I have been in a series of two million meetings. So I think that uh, you're kind of on your own on this one because I think that it really is complex, this question of knowing what it means to submit to something, knowing what it means to kneel, a very specific way. Uh, there's, a, there's a sadomasochistic edge to this. There's a, there's a whole sexual thing that's going on, which says in the second part, in what way or ways does this involve the sexual, erotic, and libidinal? So this whole question that you start off with uh, Kierkegaard's teleological suspension of the ethical, and it starts moving into this other stuff, like, for example, uh, the Bataille thing that we did, um, the, the dead man. How do you spell Bataille? B-A-T-A-I-L-L-E. Bataille. Uh, and I, I said to link your argument to the Wicker Man or the Night Porter. Anybody seen the Night Porter? 
it's another great, horrible film. It was done in 1964. That's the night Porter you have to see. Not anyone that's anywhere ever. Right. Like nothing with Nicholas Cage, really. <laughs> no, no, that's terrible. Sometimes he's good. Like in Kick Ass, I thought he was pretty good. He's, he's good when he flips out. Like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Right. Really yeah, what? Oh, I didn't see that. It's one of the films I've seen recently, and I was just waiting for him to flip out, and he just didn't, and I was really disappointed. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions on these questions so far? Now, again, let's just go through because I want you to look around who's doing what and I want you to talk to each other about these questions. I don't, there's no way to cheat in this class. It's not possible. I mean, obviously you have to write up your, uh, your little essays by yourself, more or less. Um, obviously if they look exactly the same, except there's a different name attached, that'll be a bit of a problem. And sadly you have to do that. You have to, you have to hand in your own work. However, no point in not discussing this with everybody else and having important dinner parties, uh, important like drink sessions, you know, so I expect that out of you. I expect you to go and, and immerse yourself in this and learn how to walk with this kind of stuff. And it, if you don't, not that you have to go drinking because you don't have to, but you know, if you don't uh, allow yourself to take a big piece of paper and start doing free association of what goes where, that's, that would be a problem. You wouldn't be getting this. Uh, in question five, uh, you might also want to bring in Freud. Okay, now notice at the very bottom it says, these are tough questions. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and there's no need to suffer in silence in trying to answer them. Work out your answers with your colleagues in your studios. Discuss aloud during dinners and at the pub. Notice I put this in. More important or as important, should you have any difficulty whatsoever, you would like me to see a draft before it is handed in or several drafts. Please do not hesitate to contact me directly by phone or email, probably by email given the way I'm having to run around the whole time. Um, that, um, that telephone number should not be put on the web. So if this, once this gets put on the web, uh, we will take my telephone number off. But um, just so you have it. Okay, so let's do it again. How many people think they're doing number one? <laughs> okay, so we've gotten down to one. Oh, oh okay. great, yes, right. So, we're doing a problem my own, is there? Okay, so people again. have to help. Again. People have to help Mark, okay? So even though you're not doing the question, then you must suffer with him, and he has to tell you what he's coming up with, and you must nod sagely or go like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, how about number two? Okay, so we got one. Are you doing number two as well? Oh no. One, two, three, four. See everybody. See who's involved with one, two, three, four. Got everybody. Okay. You see, you see who you are. You know who you are. Good. <laughs> okay. Number three. One, two, it's going to be very nice between the two of you. Little, little dinners, <laughs> you know, little bloodletting, you know. I think, you know, barbed wire um, to help you. Uh, yeah, okay, you're going to talk to each other? Okay, good. Uh, four, who's doing four? Okay, one, two, oh, again, little dinners, <laughs> little, you know, very quiet. So can I put five in as well? Yes, you can go to as many dinners as you'd like. <laughs> okay, five. Wow. Gosh. Okay. Um, that looks like uh, it's going to have to be a potluck dinner. Do you know what potluck? Pot, pot, potletch. Potletch. You know what that is? You obviously know what it is. You, know the word. Um, you mean as in the, uh, the tribe in North America? The whole right. kind of gifting thing. No, you will bring. No, just no, you will bring. Um, Sorry, I'm just really. Really. <laughs> 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 it's not it's not a hot one. Is, is the giving of the gift of of food. You just bring a, a dish. Okay, that's Sophie's interpretation, but it should be done in a bit of a gift sort of way. Okay. <laughs> It's a little dance. It's a green bean casserole with a freaking bow. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, here. 
<laughs> you know, uh, so I strongly recommend, uh, have you ever done an Edwardian dinner? Edwardian dinner is very good for question number five. Um, Edwardian dinners are usually like 20 course meals. They're fantastic. They start around you know, 12 in the afternoon and go about till 2 at night. And between every meal is a bottle of wine that matches, well, first of all, with every course is a bottle of wine that matches the course. And then between the meals, so that's why it takes so long. You don't have to do 20 courses. You could probably do like seven. But you still need an ex a crazy amount of, and it's great, especially if you all dress up. Well, I mean, you know, obviously we would have the servants, but well, okay, whoever's not doing five. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just, oh, great, servants. so I'm on my own and I'm the, I'm the third of <laughs> <the slave. laughs> Welcome to my world. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, um, fine. Um, now, I uh, would like to maybe, do, I, can, I have a few more minutes left, so we could actually, because I have to go to this darn meeting, um, which I didn't know until today. Uh, actually, apparently I did know, um, but I didn't, <laughs> yeah, that's how I like this, but I didn't realize that I had said yes to it. I thought I had said firmly no, but apparently I had said yes, only this was introverted. <laughs> but anyway, whatever. I have to go to this thing. Um, so we could go over any of these questions again, like in detail, like how, how to answer them, A, or I could go into my little lecture that I was going to do tonight. What would you prefer? What time do you have to go to this meeting? I have to be outside the, at 6.15. So you have to have the minutes. Yeah. What's your lecture on? Do you want to do it? What do you mean what's my lecture on? Is it a choice? Exactly. That, don't ever do that. Don't ever, in the future. I'll joke. It's like, you know. It's the number five today. <laughs> my, my favorite, my, yes, exactly. My favorite um, question that is often asked, well, not here actually, which is wonderful, but in places I've got word before is, Someone uh, doesn't make a class and they ask you, did I miss anything? <laughs> no, you missed absolutely nothing. People just sat and stared at each other. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's just unbelievable how nothing happened without your presence. Um, but that's just me being horrible. <laughs> okay. um, I'm, I'm curious about if everybody got the email about this thing going on this weekend, the erotic cult film festival thing. Oh, I did oh, yeah. 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 yeah, and I'm, I was just wondering if anybody is planning to go, because I think it would be something, because <coughs> especially, you know, some of the, uh, I think it, some of that could relate to yes. question five very Who's putting well. that on? Um, Set the Mac. Yeah, oh. it's at the Mac, and it's... I got it off the Mac, but I didn't get it on the yeah, Mac. But it does sell tickets, because it will sell yeah, do, do, it's do, do you 90 pay for, it? for all three yeah. days, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do yeah, have to I'm, I'm going. Like, I, I got the email and was like, call it off work. Like, yeah, good. Sorry, like, I'm, I've got this thing to do. Yeah. Did you say nine zero pounds? Yeah, yeah, nine zero. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. I think that. that, that yeah, that's a lot of mail. Yeah. Here's, here's what I'd like to say. Okay, further to my email last week, dear colleague. Um, I can now reveal the full program of Cine Excess Number 7, which, as you know, takes place at Mac Birmingham, 15 to 17 November, held in, by Birmingham University in the city of Brighton, bloody, bloody blue. Uh, the event also includes a free Echoes of Excess industry panel. Echoes of Excess industry panel. I wonder if they're going to be selling, like, dildos or... <laughs> what, are, what is their Echoes of Excess? If they're actually, who's the industry that's doing this, anyway? Uh, over 18, you have to be over 18. Fantastic, but booking essential, boy. I think also, note what are you going to wear. These, are, these, are, these kind of questions are very important. City Excess, European Erotic Cinema, Identity, Desire, and Disgust. Um, all looks very, very good. Yes, it looks quite good. Um, Okay, now in its seventh year, the world's leading cult film conference. That's great. And festival, come to Birmingham for the first time, courtesy of B Film, blah, 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 blah. The, this year's theme is the European erotic cinema and a special guest of the controversial and acclaimed French filmmaker Catherine Brier. She is great. Romance, Fat Girl, Anatomy of Hell. 
um, and for a more lighter note, no, and uh, art house actor turned cult Italian auteur, Francesco Borelli, The Perfume of the Lady in Black, uh, Pensioni Paola. Uh, both of them will receive Cine Excess <coughs> Lifetime Achievement Awards at the event. Okay, so here, here's what I would suggest. Uh, it, oh, dark desires, dark obsessions, dark romance. Running throughout the event uh, will be the series of UK theatrical premieres and exclusive screenings. Okay, now, here's how you do it, if you don't have the 90 pounds. Let's just turn that off. Bye. <laughs> we'll just turn that off. Um,